This stupid thing again. The Hachiroku just won't go away. You pocky eating, sushi boat ordering, ramen slurping, can we have separate checks? Group of 16 retail weeaboos won't let the 86 retire. Because of you, this doesn't get to go to the classic Toyota retirement home. Like a creaky old boxer, you want this brittle contender back in the ring to get its body banged off guardrails and paint traded. And it's all down to that childish animated show from the 90s. A teenage boy, a high schooler, drives his dad's company car and accidentally wins a street race against a Mazda RX-7, catapulting the teenager into a wild adventure of illegal street racing in rural Japan. Our hero wins races because he absorbs the skill of his opponents by watching them race. Initial D is like the Cell Saga, but with cars instead of muscly bald men. And then our hero uses that knowledge to win races and gets no money or ass. The cartoon's action is melodramatic and corny. Perfect for its target audience who just got their driver's licenses. The United States didn't get to see Initial D until the early 2000s when file sharing became popular. And I was right there with everybody else, wanting an AE86 for my very own, and not knowing that the Toyota Corolla GTS is the same car. No, the JDM makes 10 more horsepower! Can it! It's the same block and the same cylinder head. Go ahead and tune it if you want, but the original 4AGE is the right amount of power. Uh, if only I would have known how cheap Corolla GTSs were in 2004. Look at them now. You dweebs are paying way too much for these things. Here are the top five A86 sales on Bring a Trailer, presented in reverse order. Number five, a USDM 1985 SR5 sold for $24,250. In fourth place, a USDM 1985 GTS for $27,500. That was an initial D replica. Third place, bronze medal, 1986 Corolla GTS, $33,500. Number two, silver medal, a JDM 1985 Torino GT Apex, sold for $35,000. With the gold medal, a USDM 1985 GTS for 40000 All this money to live inside an anime. All this money to believe that you have natural talent. All this money to believe that if you illegally operate a motor vehicle as a child, too young for a license, you will magically absorb professional driving skills. As you can see from my overhyped meme machine, I'm a better driver than you. Don't pay $40,000 for one of these things. Enter the giveaway. Drink liquid out of a spherical container. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. That AE86 right there tied for first place for the most expensive AE86 sold in North America at $40,000. That's how much Justin Burnash paid for that. So whoever wins that, you get to say, yes, this is one of two AE86s that hit the $40,000 mark on the, uh, on the used market. We're giving away this Hachiroku. Just click on the link in the description. Go to go.getentertowin.regularcars, buy a cool mug or a digital download, and you get a chance to win this AE86. You don't even have to paint it. It's already been done for you. It even has the shop name lettering on the side. And it has all the JDM trim and the JDM lift back. And you are able to genuinely help support regular car reviews and help our ability to continually delivering awesome content for you guys every Monday after every Monday. So click on the link in the description, go to go.getentertowin slash regular cars, buy a cool mug or a digital download, and get your automatic entry. And you'll get something to drink out of too. Thank you for supporting regular car reviews. And good luck. Corolla GTSs used to be this price, now they're this price. This is how it begins, doesn't it?
This is how we get old. It used to be this price, and now it's this price. I used to be with it, and then they changed what it was. Ooh, secret start button. This is a TRD shift knob and also short throw shifter. So this is pretty tight. That's neutral. One, two, three, four, five. And reverse is gonna be bam. Come on. Reverse is gonna be bam. There we go. So you will shift pretty forcefully. You're not really going to be in the show. Well, I mean, in the show, maybe the idea was he was so slick that with a short throw, he could have he could have done that correctly. I like that we do have the correct, and they never changed it in the show. The sort of rubberized accordion-style shift boot, as opposed to so many of these things rot away. And they're replaced with, you know, Crown Royal bags or, you know, just some eBay knockoff thing. And don't think I'm just posing with an AE86. I'm hauling stuff. Hauling hikers. Don't worry, I washed it. The thing is, this thing does hold a lot of stuff. Those are two full through hiker packs. All right. <laughs> In the, it's not really fast on the straightaways, but in the corners, you know, in the twisties, it's, it's pretty fast. Oh, you got a guitar with you? Yep, a little travel guitar. Nice. I hope you don't mind that I'm filming oh, no. for my YouTube channel. What do you do for your YouTube channel? Is it like... Stuff yep, maybe? I review cars. Cool. And this car, uh, someone's gonna win this at really? the at the end of uh in one wash, then the leading value detergent in three copyrighted music. So yep. Oh, and uh <laughs> secret start <Whoa>. button. <laughs> so and it's got a backup camera? Yep, aftermarket backup camera. This car is from 84. Now we gotta get up to speed pretty quick, but you know, <laughs> we got the right machine for that. The A86 is a worldwide phenomenon. Some of them even rode on Saab wheels. This one doesn't. But Saab wheels on a Japanese car is about as close as General Motors ever came to touching a masterpiece. The A86 doesn't need to be the fastest. It doesn't need to be the best handling. It doesn't need to be the sexiest. Because just like your mom, it's all of those things already. It's the only car as balanced as this complete breakfast. It was one of the most popular cars in Puerto Rico at the time, and if not, the most popular. Don't believe us? Just ask the Roman. Uh, well? But there is a reason why any form in the world will tell you this is one of the greatest cars of all time. And it doesn't even necessarily have to do with the car itself. Yes, it's time to dip back into literary theory. I promise this is going somewhere. And frankly, just be thankful I'm not assigning you a doorstop from the campus bookstore that costs half a mortgage payment. Now, it was the French philosopher Louis Althusser who came up with a definition of ideology to try to explain why we believe what we believe and why we behave the way we do. I'm going to give you the short version because I know this is a half day and you're getting out early and this may or may not translate. Whatever. We got out of the teaching profession for a reason. Althusser's definition of ideology represents, quote, the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence. 
Once again, the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence. Althusser says, ideology is a shared belief system that holds a group of people together. And sometimes, it's a system that doesn't actually reflect the real material conditions of a person's life. But there are two kinds of systems in a given society. Number one, repressive state apparatuses. Repressive state apparatuses, which are any systems that can force compliance to certain behaviors, such as police and prisons. On the other hand, number two, are ideological state apparatuses. Ideological state apparatuses which create ideologies in people that are then internalized. For the most part, it's the same as the first, but it makes you think it's your choice. Ideological state apparatuses make you think your decisions and your actions are your own. Althusser states, ideology has a material existence. It's not just about believing in heaven, it's giving that stranger a ride because you believe it'll get you into heaven, and then arriving in heaven 60 years early because the stranger had a bowie knife and a pill problem. You can argue about which institutions are ISAs, whether we're talking about schools, social clubs, churches, commercial news, whatever, but they exist. In this case, car culture itself is an ideological state apparatus, because it's hard not to be scooped up into the collective consciousness of the forums, the blogs, the casual talk at car shows and meets, even the reviews you're watching online, including this one. The aura of reverence surrounding this car has led it to become the Beatles of the automotive world. You've seen other YouTube videos about this. Why is the A86 so good? Well, it just is. Why are you asking? Hey, Dale, this guy thinks the A86 is overrated. Let's downvote him. And then suddenly, you have negative opinions being drowned out by the rhetoric that reinforces the ideology of the dominant class. In this case, the people who revere the A86. Before long, people just accept that it's a great car whether or not they've ever even driven one. And look, it is a good car. It's earned its reputation. Anybody who wants to argue that point is going to have plenty of evidence to support it. But it's hard to really explain why without putting you in the car itself. It's a car that's light and steers even lighter, even without power steering. It's slower than you think, but more sporty than it seems. And it looks dated and timeless at the same time. It's a beautiful contradiction. Because even if it hadn't become popular, it would still have become popular. What I mean is, even if it hadn't been for Initial D, you would still have the Drift King. He showed the world what this car can do in a video that went viral before you know, that was even a thing. A video that birthed drifting as a motorsport. The whole thing built a legend around a car who, even without the Drift King and even without Initial D, still had a lengthy motorsport reputation. It was a rally car, a champion of the British touring circuit. It adorned the cover of countless magazines. But without Initial D, without the Drift King, without the motorsport's pedigree, this was still a low-cost, reliable, fun little car with a durable engine, 50-50 weight distribution, live rear axle, handling tighter than a 5-inch inseam, this was always going to have an audience. And that audience was always going to argue its favor. Loudly. So whether it eventually gained legend status or not, it would always be accepted as a good car within the ISA of car culture. But it took time to get to that point. Because this car was also what it appeared to be on the surface. A Toyota Corolla. A mid-engine, rear-wheel drive Corolla, sure, but a Toyota Corolla nonetheless. So what the Drift King and Initial D and all the motorsports wins did was allow people to see this car in a different way. Because before all that, this was the automotive equivalent of Clark Kent. It looks simple enough, 
But underneath was hidden potential that a lot of people didn't know to look for, just like the protagonist of Initial D. People didn't put two and two together about Clark Kent because no one thinks Superman has a secret identity in the first place. In a world where a lot of superheroes wear masks, Superman shows his face. It gives the impression that he's Superman 24 hours a day. There's no secret to hide. So when people see Clark Kent, they might notice a resemblance, and they might get suspicious when Clark excuses himself to go take a dump when the news breaks about a children's hospital catching fire. But no one's going to think Clark Kent is secretly some alien from another planet, and that's if people even know Superman is an alien from another planet to begin with. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the A86 didn't give off Superman vibes, even if it had Superman potential. But then Initial D came out and no one could ever see Clark Kent again. Only the Man of Steel. No one could see the Corolla. Only the Hachiroku. This, despite how minimalist it really was, and how much people had to tune and modify it to get it to that legendary status. I mean, even in Initial D, the whole idea is that it was a ghost. Something you wouldn't necessarily expect to be as capable as it was. A car you use to deliver tofu. The show doesn't work if he goes there in a car that's obviously better than everybody else's and accept it as such, like the MR2 AW11. That was Toyota's superior offering to the A86. Same engine, but mounted correctly, mid-shift. And also, an AW11 doesn't overheat in racing. A stock AW11 will not overheat in racing applications. I suppose if you really tried, you could get it to boil, but all that extra coolant running from the back of the car to the front of the car is just more material to cool the engine. Plus, now the radiator sits up front far away from the heat of the engine, so the radiator is more efficient. So the MR2 AW11 should have been the hero, but it wasn't. It was the lesser car, the slower car. An A86 is slower than an AW11, but the A86 was the everyman car. It could haul five people and cargo. The MR2 couldn't do that. Also, the Toyota A86 requires less skill to drive than the MR2. There's no snap over steer. It's not like you can get behind the wheel and suddenly you know how to drift. Try to do it anywhere other than a track, you're going to be spending more time in bushes than an erotic Easter egg hunt. No, the A86 was meant to be fun. Cheap and fun. Like Street Fighter. You can pick it up and play. But even that doesn't get to the heart of why this car is respected as it is today. Why it fetches high prices and why it's so beloved. It's simple to just say, well, because it's that good. But that's an ideological state apparatus at work again. I mean, it's not the best of its time. The MR2 was and is faster in the corners and on the straight and remained in production longer than the A86. But among the cars and make of its era, the A86 had a lot of ink spilled about it. And the people who drive them were banging the drum for a generation. So we could circle around the mulberry bush of Toyota worship. Toyota tax exists for a reason, and this car earns it with the tofu tax applied on top. But a lot of the legend is really, really, really good PR. Car culture itself took a great car and elevated it to mythic status. You can't just trace it all back to initial D because it's too simple that way. It's the totality of what this car represents, a racing heritage a role in fathering new motorsport, and its role in anime and video games that endured in ways I'm not sure anybody expected. It's all of these things together that created the discourse surrounding the A86, a discourse that has been reinforced through ISAs like car culture itself, so that the majority accept it as true. Well, is it true? Or is this just one big ideology? Well, it's your call. And it's your chance to win this. Click the link in the description. And someone is going to go home with the legend. Get white wheels, they said. It'll be fun, they said. You get to clean your wheels every time you go for a drive. Isn't that awesome? That's great. Mmm, look at that brake dust. Yum, 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 yum. This was only about 10 miles. Everybody likes white, everybody likes white wheels.
They look so sharp. They look great at night. You can tell everybody how serious an automotive enthusiast you are by your white wheels. Fill up your car with premium gasoline and then spray cum all over your white wheels. You will know that you have the most fast and you get the <laughs> your wind resistance rules because you have cum all over your wheels. This one isn't so bad. <laughs> You're all out of cum to cum on your white wheels. Uh, I hope you like buying paper towels. You'll be buying more than you ever thought. Yeah, that's the good stuff. People will know you've been here by your endless rolls of paper towels being blown across the parking lot. Do you like buying disc detergent? I hope you do. You get to spend your days not cleaning brake dust off your wheels and just kind of just kind of smears around all over your white wheels. Great. Your life is now hoses. Your life is now whatever hoses are at your parents' house. Get ready to ask this question of your parents. Hey, do you have any old rags you don't care about? Yeah, I'm going to get them completely black and you'll never be able to clean anything with them again. Your life will be hoses. Your life will be cold hands. Cold hands in 40 degree weather. Cold hands when the sun doesn't work. The sun's out, but it's still cold. And you get to be here and just wreck dish towels. Get them filled with brake dust over and over and over again. And then you get to shove your hand deep inside the wheel because you made the outside of the wheel clean. But the inside now looks even dirtier. White wheels. It's like the automotive equivalent of eternal post-nut clarification. Clean your wheels and then you come.